the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. The State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the state capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back to Capital View. I'm David Goins. And I'm Roby Brock. We're joined in this segment by Erica G. She's the Chief of Staff for Arkansas Attorney General Dustin McDaniel. Thank you so much for being here. You've been instrumental in the negotiations on this desegregation settlement. So Thanks thank for you having for being me. with us. Yeah, let's jump in really on the first question. I mean, from the negotiation standpoint, Erica, how did this whole thing get started? Was this a situation where, you know, the state reached out to either the school district or one of the parties, or who kind of picked up the phone first, if that, if that in fact was the case? Well, as, uh, as I think most people know, uh, Attorney General McDaniel had been trying since 2007 to reach some kind of resolution in this case um, after the legislature uh, passed the act asking him to do so. But um, the most recent efforts were really started by Dr. Suggs at, in Little Rock School District. I mean, he came into his position and um, came in to, to meet the general and, and immediately asked his attorney to set up a meeting so we could sit down and start talking about it. And that's what initiated it this time. How do you feel uh, when you've heard what Judge Marshall said on Friday at the, the DSEG hearing, the preliminary hearing? He said, you know, this is not in any way final, but he did say, I underscore the, that this is not a final approval from the court, but I see nothing that causes me concern. You got to feel pretty positive when a judge says that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I think all, all the parties came out of the hearing on Friday feeling that we uh, had negotiated a good settlement that the judge is, is ultimately going to approve, give final to approval, excuse me, final approval to. Sure, I mean, what was maybe during this negotiation process maybe the trickiest part to kind of get through? Was there a point where, you know, since you're kind of so instrumental in this, this back and forth talking to the parties, we were thinking, I don't know, this might not happen, or was there a point like that? There were many points like that, uh, <laughs> to be honest with you. There were many points like that. There, um, this case is so complicated. It's been going on so long, and there's all these different parties. Everybody's got their own point of view and their own concerns, and um, it was very difficult to negotiate through all of those and keep everybody heading in the same direction. And there, there was definitely more than one occasion where we were worried that we wouldn't be able to. Do you think that the three school districts are desegregated or you just think we're this close to a judge saying that they're desegregated does that question make sense it does make sense um, Little Rock and North Little Rock are both unitary they are officially desegregated um, Pulaski County Special School District is not yet but it's close and uh, that's part of what the agreement addresses is um, some figuring out exactly what the remaining issues are to getting uh, PCSSD unitary and how that should be done. Well, what, do you, what do you think it means though to say that they are unitary, that they are desegregated? Technically, what does that mean? It means that they no longer need to be under court supervision to, in order to monitor um, how, how race, issues of race are handled in the school district, I guess would be the, the broadest way to answer that. <laughs> Couple things, on, the, on this most recent round of negotiations that led us to this settlement, how much background did you have to do? I mean, did you have to go all the way back to 1982 or were the issues more since 2000 and they were a little more uh, present to, to resolve? Well, I think certainly um, some of the things that have happened going back to 1982 really informed the party's stance and to some degree their attitudes towards one another um, because there's a long history and a lot of the people who were involved in were involved in negotiating the settlement had been involved for a long time. So, but um, the issues that we really were dealing with now were really more looking forward than they are looking back and, and figuring out how to untangle the relationships between the three districts and how to, uh, how to put those districts in the place where they are treated like all the other school districts in the state. And I guess moving forward in January, there's gonna be called what's called a fairness hearing essentially. Can you kind of explain A, what a fairness hearing is and what, what do you maybe expect during that process? 
Well, a fairness hearing is um, something that is necessary because it is a class action case. The, the Joshua interveners are, a, are certified as a class. So uh, there will be notice that will be sent out to uh, members of the class and members of the public that will let them know what the terms of the settlement are and they'll have an opportunity to object or comment on the terms of the settlement. And the judge will um, is holding a hearing in January where he will get more evidence about the terms of the settlement, why the parties believe it's a fair and adequate settlement for everyone involved, and also hear objections if there are any from uh, members of the class. Obviously, from the major stakeholders in this case, there seems to be uh, this uh, unified front of satisfaction that there is the settlement in place. Do you know of anyone or any particular group that is not satisfied with what the outcome has been so far? I don't. I don't. Um, I, I think everyone involved in this case has tried very hard to satisfy the concerns that their constituents had during the process to make sure that when we got to this point everything had been addressed and everything had been resolved to the extent it's possible to do so. And obviously the judge put out you know, the idea of if something falls apart you know, in January or even later that there is still what a, a March date essentially that this theoretically could go to trial. I, I would think that's something you hope to avoid. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but that's something that was very important to the state. I mean, it's something we wanted to be sure is that we did not lose a, a trial setting coming up very near time in the event that the settlement did fall apart. Makes sense. All right, Erica G. Chief of Staff for Arkansas Attorney General Dustin McDaniel, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, when we come back, we'll get to the legislative viewpoint of this desegregation decision from State Senators Jane English and David Johnson, both from Pulaski County. I'm David Goins alongside Ruby Brock. You have the Capitol View on Sunday morning on KARK.